April here. I am so excited to see you. Can you believe it's already August? See, I love this time of the year because this is when we get ready to go back to school. And when I was in school, I was so excited because I could get all new school supplies, new clothes, I'd get a new teacher, but most of all, I was so excited because I got to make new friends. And even though I was super excited, I was also a little bit nervous. What about you? Are you a little nervous? You know, we know this year is going to look a little bit different for you. Whether you're gonna do school at home or at your school, there's one thing that we know for sure, that God is with you and he will be there to help you. One of the ways that I'm reminded of how strong God is and that he is always with me is by looking around. And, and when I look around, I see everything that he has created. When we look outside, we see the beautiful world around us. We're reminded that God is so great, powerful, and creative. From the birds flying in the sky, to the planets orbiting around the sun, to animals running around, everything points to God's indescribable creativity. And on top of that, you know what? He made us too. He made us in His image. And that is pretty cool. So. When I look in the mirror, I say, oh, God made me to be like him. And you know what that means is I can be strong and I can be courageous because God is. And so this month, we are learning all about creativity. And that is imagining what you can do because you were made in God's image. And I don't know about you, but I think I can do a lot because I am made in God's image. So I can't wait to hear our story for today, but first, we are going to worship my favorite thing. So get up, stretch it out, and let's get ready. It's not jealous any time. It's not proud and it's not rude. Love forgives and speaks the truth.
and I read your word. Open up my heart, I want to worship you. When I get quiet and I read My father, you're my best friend, and you love me, you hear me, that will never end. Hey! I'll seek you, I'll find you, I'll give you my praise, and I will follow you. You're my maker, my father, you're my best friend, and you love me, you hear me, that will never end. I'll seek you, I'll find you, I'll give you my praise, and I will follow you. All of my day Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning. The very beginning. Before the first breath. Before the first flash of color. Before the first moment in time. There was... Nothing. Nothing. Nothing except God. But when God saw nothing, he saw a blank canvas. He saw the perfect backdrop for a work of art beyond imagination. So, God created. From absolutely nothing, He brought forth the heavens and the earth. But there was no shape or form. God's Spirit hovered over the dark emptiness. Then, God called out, Let there be light. Brilliant light shattered the darkness like golden trumpets on a still morning. Bright rays shimmered and danced in all the hues of the rainbow. God saw the light was good. He divided the light from the dark, calling the light day and the darkness night. Evening and morning together shaped the very first day of all time. Then God said, Let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. By His words alone, God shifted the waters, leaving a vast arching space above the sky. Evening and morning rolled past. The second day, God lifted his voice again. Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let ground appear. Dry land shrugged its way out of the water. Islands and vast continents and gritty deserts and towering mountains. God called the dry ground land and he called all the gathered waters seas. But God had even bigger plans for this day. Let the land produce plants and let there be trees on the land. In moments, tall grasses unfurled across the plains and giant redwoods shot up from the dirt. Flowers and grapevines and carrots and corn sprouted and flourished. God saw that all of it was good. That evening and morning closed out the third day. Let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. At the sound of God's voice, the blazing sun exploded into being. The silvery moon spun out. Stars and galaxies flooded into space, filling the universe. Pew, pew, pew. God set the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night and God saw it was good. That evening and morning made up the fourth day. 
but God wasn't done painting his masterpiece just yet. Let the seas be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth and across the huge space of the sky. Instantly, the seas and rivers and ponds writhed with dolphins and octopi, salmon and minnows. Eagles soared and bluebirds nested while ostriches stretched their long necks. God saw they were good. That evening and morning formed the fifth day. But God kept working on his creation. Let there be livestock and creatures that move along the ground and wild animals. At once, animals of every kind appeared. Elephants thundered through the forests and squirrels darted up tree trunks. Monkeys chattered and pigs rolled happily in the mud. God saw it was all good, but he had one more creation in mind. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds. Let them rule over all the animals. Then, with his own hands, God formed the very first man and the very first woman, Adam and Eve. I am me. And you are you. And this place, it's beyond words. Unlike the animals, God made people in his image to reflect him. Have children and fill the earth. Rule over the fish and the birds and every living creature. I am giving you every plant on the earth for food. God looked over everything he had created and saw that it was very good. That evening and morning were the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> I mean, his work was finished. His glorious creation was complete. But because God had formed people in his image, they too could reflect his imagination and creativity. The possibilities ahead of them were endless. our story today of hearing how God created everything, including me and including you. So let me ask you this, where do you see God's creativity? When you look around, what do you see that he made, how he used his creativity? You see, our bottom line is there is no limit to God's creativity. And like we said before, we are made in his image, which means we can be creative too. Our memory verse this month says, Lord, you are so great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. And that's Psalm 145.3. So we want you to work on memorizing that this month. You know, our memory verses are so important. Those are those little things that we can tuck away in our pocket. And when we are having a bad day or we're scary and we just need to be reminded of how much God loves us, we'll have that close by. We have it tucked away in our little pocket in our brain. And we can say, you know what? God is powerful and he is with me and he is going to protect me. So what a fun start to today to talk about all that God has created. And I cannot wait to continue learning about creativity this month. And don't forget, this is about what you can do. This is about how you can be creative because you are made in whose image? That's right, you're made in God's image. So I look forward to exploring this with you all month long. We are praying for you guys. We are getting very close to the start of school and I am just so excited. I cannot wait to see you in September and hear all about your first month of school. So guys, we love you so very much and we cannot wait to see you next week. Bye guys.